Well, we find ourselves here in the beautiful grounds of Sunbury Court, this historic Fantastic. home of the High Council. Yes. Uh, we're just a short while ago the 22nd General of the Salvation Army was elected and I'm thrilled to have you with me today. Uh, General-elect Lyndon Buckingham. Kia ora, first of all. Thank you very much. <laughs> Kia ora to you. Yes. And uh, thank you for spending a little time with us. You've just been elected as our next General. Yeah. Are you surprised? Are you shocked? Or are you determined? Uh, probably there's a mixture of all, of all of those things. Yes, I think nobody comes expecting yeah. Uh, but I think we all come with a mindset of making ourselves available to the will of God, um, ready to do what the Lord wants us to do. So I didn't come with any end game in mind, but I did come um, willing to participate in whichever way was yeah. appropriate. Um, and so uh, feeling a little overwhelmed, but humbled, mm -hmm. uh, grateful for the support of the members of the High Council and their endorsement. Commissioner Yusak had uh, the golden bowl uh, in the chamber, mm -hmm. and it was just a visual reminder of thousands of Salvationists who not only prayed leading up to the High Council yeah. week, but have prayed us all the way through. You know, if I was reflecting on a highlight of the council itself, it would be just the uh, the spirit within the chamber, just mm -hmm. a, a beautiful sense of the presence of God. Although feeling overwhelmed and all of those things, I also feel that we have allowed the Lord to reveal what He wanted to happen, and we've participated in that. And I take comfort from that. I've I've had a wonderful endorsement uh, from the members of the High Council, and and I receive this as from the Lord. And, um, and I will serve. And I'm grateful because uh, Bronwyn is right there with me and, uh, and we, will, we will share this ministry together and we'll try and serve the Lord and serve the Salvation Army. And yes, actually, I'm a little bit excited about the opportunity. We know you as a family man, um, a, a, a dad and a granddad, very recently a new grandbaby. Yes, How have yes. you had time to connect with them and how do they feel about this news? You know, the amazing thing is that my family is 18,000 kilometers away from this venue. So they're a long way away physically. But uh, here we are in a little room off the side of the chamber, FaceTiming with them and they're all right there. So middle of the night for them, uh, but they're all awake and uh, we've had an opportunity to share with uh, both my son and daughter-in-law and my daughter and son-in-law and the grandkids. And uh, I, you know, I just thank God for them because they have been so positive. I mean, we've already been away from our homeland since 2013. So, you know, we've already done a decade. They have been so supportive of us in fulfilling God's calling on our lives. And so to be able to see them on the screen and have them go, go mum and dad, you know, it's just been absolutely wonderful. We were also able to connect with Bronwyn's parents, uh, lifelong salvationists now in their 80s. So they were still up in the middle of the night, ready to receive our call. And of course, they were also, you know, overwhelmed and naturally very proud. But can you tell me a little bit about how you came to faith in Christ and how you were called to officership? When I was about six or seven years of age, my parents took me to a Salvation Army Congress. And at the end of the meeting, Somebody from the platform said, if you would like to meet Jesus, come down to the front. Mm. And so I went down to the front, fully expecting to meet Jesus. I knelt at the mercy seat, and after a little while, there was an arm around my shoulder. And I thought, this is Jesus. Mm. And when the person started talking, I said to myself, it sounds like my Uncle Wears. <laughs> so I took a look, and it was my Uncle Wears. And although only six or seven years of age, I was disappointed because I'd gone with an expectation that I was going to meet Jesus and what I got instead was my uncle. And so it created a little bit of doubt mm. in a small boy's mind. And from then on, I was sort of a child that was going through the army ranks, sort of doing the motions. I became a junior soldier. I even became a senior soldier. But I don't think I would be able to testify at that point that I had any real uh, experience of my own. Mm. Changed for me on the 12th of August, 1979, as a 17-year-old at a youth councils. And it was in that meeting that the realization of God's love for me in the person of Jesus Christ 
absolutely came alive. I mean, I just burst with this understanding. It was, it was more than just mental. It was in my heart. It was emotional. Uh, I was full of repentance. I was full of sorrow. I was full of joy. It was like, it is real. It is for me. It's, it's... And so I made my way uh, down to the mercy seat. And uh, it's a strange thing, Joe. I was, I was crying and I was laughing and uh, I had all of these emotions going on all at the same time. The love of God burst into my heart. That's what mm -hmm. happened for me. And uh, I came into a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I believe uh, an experience of the Holy Spirit. And so impactful was it for me that I didn't wait to be called to be an officer. Before that meeting was over, I signed a little candidate's covenant wow. that you tore in half and kept for yourself and gave uh, the other half to the candidate secretary, and I still have that piece of wow. paper in my Bible. One of the things that will be very important in your role is to be an inspiration and an influence. Mm. Who else influenced you in your life? Yeah, I, I had so many influences that it would be difficult for me to name, but I would say faithful salvationists who took an interest, who took time to listen, mm. uh, who um, were honest uh, as I was growing up local officers that put an arm around and said, come on, get back into line. Very, very helpful in my upbringing. My own parents, I would have to give testimony to, my officer parents uh, who loved us and trained us in the ways of the Lord, huge influence. These are people who the Lord sends along to help us in our spiritual journey, in our discipleship maturing. They shape us, you know, mm. and uh, I'm grateful. There have been many, many influences, mm. and uh, I thank God for every one of them. So I asked some of the young people from my core, my church, what would they like to ask the general elect? And this is what they wanted to know. What would your school teachers say if they could see you now? Uh, they would not believe it. <laughs> they would not believe it. I think that even if my father was still alive, he wouldn't believe it <laughs> either. So I think I will have confounded them because I was not a good student. By necessity, your speech to the High Council is kept private. It's not shared with the Salvation Army world. What one thing, though, would you want to share with your Salvation Army family today? I think one thing that I would feel very confident in sharing, because it's not confidential, is that I expressed my love for what I call the three big ideas of the movement. And by that, I mean, one, um, we're a people that love to talk about Jesus. We want people to know that God loves them and that Jesus is the ultimate proof of that love. And so I love the fact that the Salvation Army has always been about recognizing our responsibility to share the good news of the gospel, that, that God loves them, that Jesus is the proof and that welcome is available through him. I would pray that salvationists all around the world would find it very natural and easy to be able to speak to others about their personal relationship with Jesus Christ and the transformation that he has made in their lives. That's a big idea of this movement. Uh, we want people to know the good news, that there is life, there is purpose, and there is hope, and there is eternity through faith in Jesus Christ. And uh, if we could get excited about that around the globe, think about the impact of that. Another big idea of the movement is that we think that practical demonstrations of the values of the kingdom of God are as impactful as talking about them. Mm. And so uh, the sleeves rolled up, the caring for the needy, the helping the vulnerable, the being the voice for the voiceless, the advocating for justice, the going after things where people are being in some way uh, tortured or separated or rejected, that, that we as a movement, we go to those places. We put our sleeves up and we say, we don't want to just talk about God's love. Mm. We, we want to show you God's love. This is the soup, soap and salvation that has been our history. And I, I, I would love it if salvationists would get this idea that actually, I can do that. I, I can knock on a neighbor's door and say, is there any way I can help you? Or is there any way I can serve you? And the third thing that I shared was, um, we're a holiness movement. We think there is some value in the world to being salt and being light. We, we value the indwelling spirit that makes us clean and free and whole mm -hmm. and, and joyful. And I, I think that when, when we are walking in the spirit in such a way that it's the love of God that's bearing fruit in our lives, mm. we underestimate the impact and the value of that in the world. 
I, I have no hesitation in say, um, although vision statements aren't worked out yet and priorities aren't sorted, if we could, if we could be that all around the world, hello, yeah. you know, come on. You are our first Kiwi, our first New Zealander. That's true. Um, you're going to be going around the world making history. What most excites you about the role of General? I think it's the privilege of being able to encourage and inspire and facilitate Salvation Army mission around the world. My own love for the Lord mm -hmm. uh, has to be used to communicate to Salvationists around the world. So I think I am very conscious that I'm being afforded a wonderful and privileged opportunity to speak into the lives of Salvationists around the world about our mission and our purpose in the world. And that's a huge privilege. What can we be praying for for you in these days? When we were at the uh, event last Saturday for General Bryan, we were invited to fill out those little cards. And I wrote on one of those cards, grace, mm. peace, wisdom, and courage. So I think if I was asking the Salvation Army world to be in prayer for myself and for Commissioner Bronny, mm. those would be the things. I think it's probably not inappropriate for me to say, if you could spare a prayer for our family, that would be wonderful. General-elect, uh, we thank you for your time today. We pray God's continued blessing upon you, upon Commissioner Bronwyn and upon your family. Mm. Thank you for your time today. Thank you, Joe. You're welcome.